Hi, my name is Erin Devine, and I'm a mother of three. Um, my son's name is Davin. He is 17, and he was my first child to be diagnosed with ADHD. Before we received Davin's diagnosis, um, life was uh, complicated. <laughs> um, we were receiving weekly phone calls to pick him up from school. Um, we were being told that he was having difficulty coping in the classroom with his emotions, difficulty focusing on day-to-day -day tasks, um, difficulty engaging socially with his peers. It was a really scary time for us as a family because when your child starts school, you know, they're told it's a magical time. Um, they're going to make friends and learn new things and have so much fun. Um, and when your child starts school and their experience is one of fear, anxiety, and shame, um, it's devastating, uh, not just for the parents, but for your child as well. He first started G uh, senior kindergarten within the first month. It was suggested that he be moved back into the JK grade. Um, he was experiencing such difficulty that they um, were of the thought that one extra year of kindergarten would be beneficial to him. Um, we agreed because he was a late birthday anyway, so we thought, well, this will give him more time to adjust. Um, to the educational routines and experiences. Um, we were told kind of the hallmark things about a child with ADHD. He had difficulty focusing, he couldn't sit still, he had difficulty engaging and interacting with his peers. Um, it seemed he had difficulty in everything when it came to his day-to-day interactions in this in the classroom setting. We were being told he was having outbursts, meltdowns, um, trying to leave the classroom, trying to leave the schoolyard, you know, bursting into tears. Those were the things that were kind of telling us what his day-to-day -day looked like. There wasn't, um, you know, the happy moments. We weren't hearing about those. Um, it was very much negative feedback that we were receiving. We started having meetings with the school staff and I went into them thinking the goal was going to be that we would have a plan in place to support Davin in the classroom or that I would be provided with information on how to move forward. Instead, they were very unstructured, unorganized meetings with five school staff members taking it in turns to tell me um, everything they thought was negative or everything they thought was wrong uh, about my son, who I love very dearly. Um, there was not a lot of strength-based or, you know, positive reinforcement that I was being told of, and so that was really difficult to go through those meetings and continue to try to work in partnership with the school staff. At this point, you know, he's four and five and he's so unhappy every day, um, coming home in tears. Um, his self-esteem had plummeted. Um, he would say really uh, negative things about himself. There's a lot of negative self-talk. Um, I don't know why I'm bad. I don't know why I can't follow the rules. I don't know why I can't be like everybody else. And, you know, at an age where a child should not have that type of stress and anxiety related to, you know, going to school every day, 
it was an experience that was breaking him and it was breaking us as well. I found the system of support for children with ADHD to be incredibly difficult to navigate. Um, at the time, it, this is 2011, there were zero supports for children with ADHD in my area. Um, a lot of programs that we were referred to either by school staff or by medical professionals didn't consider ADHD to be a diagnosis that warranted um, intensive supports. Um, you know, we started almost panicking because you hear all the time about the importance of those first five years and you hear about the importance of early intervention and we weren't able to access any of um, the resources that were available to children with other diagnoses. So that was difficult to feel helpless and like I didn't know where to look next. If I was going to tell somebody uh, anything about ADHD, it would be that there's a lot that happens under the surface that we don't know about. Children and individuals with ADHD often have to work twice as hard um, to, to fall short of the expectations that are put on them. And we need to recognize the damage that that is doing to students with ADHD. Students and individuals with ADHD, um, they're less likely to graduate, they're less likely to go to post-secondary training, less likely to gain and, and retain employment, they're more likely to live in poverty, uh, experience substance abuse and mental health disorders, experience incarceration, they have increased suicide rates. So when we look at all of those factors, um, I, I think it's really apparent that we're grossly under supporting and underfunding um, ADHD and there aren't a lot of places that offer the type of support that CADIC offers and that would be what I would tell somebody if they were wondering why should I donate. Um, The reason is that um, it's it's necessary. It's an emergency that we need to be supporting and moving forward with uh, giving people a place to reach out to and feel included.